Welcome back here to Live Now from Fox. We have some breaking news to report. A jury has found Paul Flores guilty of murdering Kristen Smart when the two were students at Cal Poly back in 1996. A second jury acquitted Flores' father, Ruben Flores, 81, of being an accessory to murder. Take a look at uh, some of this video here. This was back in 1996. Paul Flores also will be sentenced on December the 9th for that first degree murder conviction. He faces a sentence of 25 years to life. Prosecutors claim that Paul Flores, now 45, killed Smart after attempting to rape her following a party. Witnesses said he was the last person to be seen with Smart and her body has never been found. Authorities had claimed that the elder Flores, his father, helped his son cover up Smart's slain. They claimed that Smart was buried in the yard of the elder Flores's home. Father and son were both tried by separate juries. The jury for the father reached its verdict yesterday, but its decision has been sealed while the son's jury continued deliberations. There, of course, Kristen Smart, a college student at the time, based back in 1996. In the meantime, we do want to let you hear from some of the prosecutors and law enforcement officials who brought the case there in Salinas, California. They just held a press conference. Let's listen in. All right, good afternoon, everyone. I'm District Attorney Dan Dow for San Luis Obispo County. And uh, we're just very pleased today that we can finally acknowledge that after more than 26 years since her murder, and being taken from her family, our criminal and victim justice system has now finally delivered justice for Kristen. The impact that Kristen Smart's disappearance and the then investigation has had on the Smart family, on our community, spanning a quarter century, has been profound. Today's guilty verdict provides some sense of justice for Kristen, the Smarts, and for our community. Today, justice delayed is not justice denied. We're very grateful to both juries for their hard work, for performing their civic duty. They've shown great commitment to their duty by enduring the long trial and reviewing the mountain of evidence that was presented. At this moment, Kristen Smart's father, Mr. Stan Smart, um, would like to make a statement on behalf of the family. I'd like to tell you that the family will not be taking any questions, and we ask that you please respect their privacy at this time. Mr. Smart. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to make a uh, comment that my wife and I, we discussed, uh, and briefly, and uh, obviously, uh, you all recognize this. Without Kristen, there is no joy or happiness in this verdict. After 26 years with today's split verdicts, we learned that our quest for justice for Kristen will continue. This has been an agonizingly long journey with more downs than ups, but we are grateful and appreciate the diligence and energy of the two juries to thoroughly review the facts and reach their decisions. Our faith in the justice system has been renewed by their commitment and effort. We feel fortunate to have relied on the professional talents and the commitment of the <clears throat> Deputy District Attorney Chris Prevell, District Attorney Dan Dow, Beth Raub, our victim witness advocate, and paralegal Becky Crippy and the stellar team of the San Luis Obispo County District Attorney's Office. We would also like to acknowledge Sheriff Ian Parkinson, Detective Clint Cole, District Attorney and Investigator J.T. Camp, and the San Luis Obispo Sheriff's Office for their tireless commitment to making Kristen a priority. The steadfast efforts of this team and so many others ultimately made these trials possible. Finally, we are about, excuse me, finally, we are also thankful for the selfless contributions of Chris Lambert, 
is Your Own Backyard podcast, which brought not only information, new information, and also the needed light for the attention during our darkest moments, sharing Kristen's voice and story. Our family is comforted and strengthened by the knowledge that Kristen continues to be held in the hearts and memories of so many people. We will never be able to personally thank everyone, but please know our gratitude and love goes out for each of you who have been with us for this long, overwhelming, and emotional journey. We're forever stronger together. Most importantly, to our Kristen, almost three decades ago, our lives were irreparably changed on the night you disappeared. Know that your spirit lives on in each and every one of us. Every day, not a single day goes by that you aren't missed, remembered, loved, and celebrated. Thank you. I'm just going to briefly add my appreciation to everyone that my husband spoke about and to each person who has been the wind beneath our wings to get us to this day. Thank you so much. Our hearts and prayers continue to be with Kristen's loving family. Stan and Denise, um, we are grateful to have had your support um, and your trust uh, to serve you in bringing justice for Kristen. Also with me today, I have um, the rest of Kristen Smart's family, her, her brother Matt and her sister Lindsay, and their spouses are here. San Luis Obispo County Sheriff Ian Parkinson is here to my right. And our prosecution team is led by Deputy District Attorney Christopher Prevrell, Assistant Chief Investigator J.T. Camp, San Luis Obispo County Sheriff's Senior Detective Clint Cole, and Assistant District Attorney Eric Dobroth. We are very grateful to Sheriff Ian Parkinson. Since he was elected and sworn into office in January of 2011, he had a renewed commitment in prioritization of solving Kristen Smart's murder. And we are grateful for every detective, every sheriff's office personnel who spent years on this case to bring us to where we are today. The sheriff's office has demonstrated incredible resolve as they have led this incredible and complicated investigation. Their tireless search for sufficient evidence is what has brought us to this point today where we have finally achieved justice for Kristen in our community. Sheriff Parkinson. You know, I want to begin just to bring up the uh, most important people in this room, and that is the Smart family. So I had the honor of meeting them in 2019 prior to taking office for the very first time, and we discussed their daughter, Kristen. And I was around in the county in law enforcement at the time Kristen disappeared, and I could only imagine what they had gone through. Um, they were still extremely committed and, and really faithful or had faith that we would get to the bottom of this and bring those responsible. And they maintained that throughout my tenure in this position. You know, we talk about justice and closure. The reality is there is some form of justice today holding the person responsible. However, that doesn't change the fact that their daughter at 19 disappeared and was murdered. And they don't have the opportunity to see her graduate from Cal Poly, be married, have grandchildren for them. So every year that goes by, they continue to suffer for this loss. I committed to them before and I remain committed that even though Paul was committed or uh, convicted today, this case is not over. 
this case will not be over until Kristen is returned home. And we have committed to that from the beginning, and I remain committed to that fact that we don't take a breath, we do not put this aside, we continue to pursue this until we bring Kristen home to the family. And that I remain committed to. Um, I would also like to thank the jury. Um, three months is a very long time to be on a jury. Um, the commitment for them, um, I, I just can't imagine. Uh, I can't imagine the commitment from the investigative team. Three months away from their home, away from their families, up here working tirelessly every week, um, lucky to go home on weekends. Uh, I just uh, admire them. But the jury has a job, and they did that job today, and I, I think it's really important. I'd also like to thank Monterey County. This is a San Luis case, obviously, and was transferred to Monterey County. The court system, the district attorney's office, the sheriff's office uh, has been phenomenal for all of us, and they deserve uh, a big thank you. We, the district attorney mentioned uh, about the investigative team. I would like to thank our district attorney for moving forward with the courage to prosecute a complicated case. This was not a simple case. Uh, 26 years had passed. Um, and, and I commend the DA for moving forward with this. Chris Prebell, um, our all-star, um, uh, truly uh, is a phenomenal attorney and a phenomenal human being um, and really uh, led this case through the court system and deserves a tremendous amount of credit. Uh, J.T. Camp, a DA investigator, by the way, used to work for the sheriff's office, <laughs> Um, phenomenal job working this case as well, hand in hand with uh, Chris. I have actually two investigators that worked that case or worked this case here. Uh, Chief Deputy Nate Paul in the in the back of the room uh, worked this case before Detective Cole uh, and did a a great job. And then of course there's Detective Cole who took this case and worked his his tail off to uh, develop and um, identify uh, evidence in this case that ultimately brought it to trial and, and deserves um, the credit for his hard work. I'm a little biased, but I have a phenomenal investigative team, and, and, and Clint is part of that team. And then last um, to uh, Eric Drobroth, of course, uh, the DA's assistant who has been involved in this for several years now and has been extremely supportive uh, and willing to, uh, to help us. Um, I, would, I would just like to close and say that, that uh, I appreciate all the community support. What this does for the community has been tremendous. The um, ability to have some form of justice to them um, is, is really second to um, the family. Um, they have been living this for 26 years themselves. Some have far left the area years before and now have um, still followed it and still support uh, the smart family. And so this is justice for them, for, for them to understand that uh, the conviction uh, means a tremendous amount. So uh, thank you for being here. Thank you, Sheriff. Now, we also are indebted to the people of the San Luis Obispo County community for their patience, for their support, their support of the Smart Family, and the ongoing investigation and ultimately the prosecution effort. We're thankful for specific caring individuals such as Christopher Lambert, who devoted countless hours in order to keep Kristen's memory alive and the case at the forefront of the hearts and minds of people in our community. His podcast helped to identify additional new witnesses and the collection of important evidence that was critical in the prosecution of this case. 
San Luis Obispo County is also blessed to have a district attorney's office full of passionate staff members who are committed to this important work. They get up each day to serve victims and to protect our community through prosecution and holding people accountable. And I'm proud of our entire office team that consists of many important staff roles in addition to attorneys in the office. But today I'm especially pleased with the exceptional level of effort and professionalism of our prosecution team, in this case, led by Deputy District Attorney Christopher Prevrell. Chris, I want to thank you for your unwavering commitment to the pursuit of a truthful and just verdict. I think everybody in the room would like to hear from you. So, Chris. Good afternoon. I just want to start on behalf of the entire Slow County team. We want to thank the Smart family. Um, they've endured what no family should ever have to go through. Uh, their perseverance has been an inspiration to us. When, when we were tired, when, when times were tough, we said amongst ourselves, if they can do it, then we can do it. So from the bottom of our hearts, thank you for being our inspiration and our rock. Um, so Maine Art Community never gave up hope. I really feel like this is a, a day for a, to recognize a community effort. Um, just about the entirety of Slow County uh, collaborated to make this day happen. And this is a prosecution that our community can be proud of. We admire the witnesses who came forward. Uh, I think we called over 50, and they testified about the truth as to what happened. Many endured decades of sadness, of guilt, frustration, yet maintained their resolve to make sure Kristen's voice was heard. We want to commend the bravery of the Jane Doe's who testified. They spoke for Kristen and said what Kristen could not. They are heroes and role models for all of us. And lastly, our entire team wants victims everywhere to know that they're dedicated people who will stand up and never forget and fight for justice to make sure their voices are heard. Thank you. So I want to also, <clears throat> I want to also recognize the extraordinary level of support provided to our team by the Bonneray County District Attorney's Office, led by my friend District Attorney Janine Paccioni. Thank you very much. Your team has now become um, a part of our DA family. For more than two decades, the story of Kristen Smart has touched us all. The story of her enthusiastic spirit, her experience as a college student at Cal Poly, her wonderful family. Her story has filled us with determination. Her family has long been a part of our San Luis Obispo County family. And we will always remember Kristen Smart. When we filed charges in April 2021, we were celebrating Crime Victims' Rights Awareness Month. And today we have finally achieved justice for Kristen. However, the hard work to end sexual violence is not over and will continue. My office will continue to work with allies in San Luis Obispo County to prevent sexual violence through education and awareness. We will continue to support survivors with services. Oh, 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 no. oh my gosh.
All right, we're going to take a pause. I'd like to ask all the press to leave the room at this point, and we will we will see in a, in a few minutes. Going out there, we hear this. Okay, so uh, we're also going to step away from this. It does look like someone uh, attending the press conference had some type of uh, medical episode to uh, make the remarks go on pause here. Okay, we're going to step away from this now, uh, but we have been listening in to these officials there uh, in Salinas, California, after a jury there found Paul Flores guilty of murdering Kristen Smart when the two were students back at Cal Poly in 1996. And a second jury acquitted Flores's father, Ruben Flores, he's now 81, of being an accessory to that murder. He was uh, up on first degree murder charges and he will be sentenced on December the 9th. He faces a sentence of 25 years to life in prison. You heard there uh, from a, a grateful Kristen Smart's family uh, who have no doubt been for the last 22 years, or excuse me, 26 years rather, uh, really through hell and back trying to get justice done for their daughter and, and for her murder. Uh, of course, the remains of Kristen Smart's were never found. And so we wanted to make sure we got that story in. That was a big breaking story today.